to, uh, thank you for being here to the House Republicans press conference. It's day 66. We're in uh, the middle of the floor debate on the operating budget. I want to first thank our uh, legislative legal department for all their hard work on amendments and working with the House Republicans on our ideas for the budget and, and how to make the budget and the footprint of government smaller. They've been up working late night, so just want to acknowledge that we really appreciate all they've done for us. Um, I think things are going well. Um, the amendment process is working smoothly. Uh, we think we've offered about 80 amendments this year. Um, we're working through those in a very uh, good fashion with the House uh, Democrats. Unfortunately, they're not accepting any of our amendments, and that's okay. The conversation is still uh, good for Alaskans to hear and to understand our ideas on how we can reduce uh, the size and footprint of government. With me today, I have Representative Sadler, Representative Chenault, and Representative Pruitt. And we're here to take your questions, and I'll let Representative Chenault opening. Thanks, uh, Mr. Majority Leader. Uh, not a lot more, I think, to add to that. Uh, the amendment process is moving forward. I think there's probably 30 more amendments out there dealing with a lot of different issues that uh, we think are important or that others think are important. And uh, uh, we'll go through that process. Uh, maybe today we'll get done. My guess is probably tomorrow uh, before we finish all of the amendments. Uh, there's some interesting amendments out there, uh, some that uh, mean a lot to uh, uh, the House majority, some that um, may mean some to the Democratic majority. If I said the Republican majority, I meant the Republican minority. But uh, anyway, so we'll go through that process. A uh, number of other issues still out there on the table mm -hmm. that uh, we need to clear up before the 90 days ends. And uh, we hope that uh, we still get out of here in 90 days. With that, Madam Chairman, thanks. Representative Sadler? Well, thank you, uh, uh, Leader. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to say while we're on the floor debating the amendments and so forth and trying to reduce the, the growth of government, I was uh, surprised and uh, concerned to see that the uh, truck hit an overpass at one of the main arterials in my community of Eagle River. So the South Eagle River exit uh, has been uh, interfered with. And while I'm certainly glad that no one was hurt physically, um, the, uh, there's been a tremendous uh, inconvenience to about 100,000 people that drive that road. You know, 30,000 people daily drive back and forth. We got 17,000 people in my community, and uh, that's a lot of new drivers. We're going to be on the roads, passing by Chugach Elementary School, passing by Eagle River Elementary School, uh, and just running through downtown Eagle River. And I'm sorry that, if, but if we had the Knick Arm Crossing, we would have had an alternative transportation corridor that would have kept Alaskans safer, would have provided for the commerce of the valley and Anchorage, and frankly, um, despite. Uh, well, I'll just say that we would have had actual construction jobs happening, money being pumped into the economy to build important infrastructure. So uh, when's the best time to build a Knick Arm Crossing? Uh, it's, it's 20 years ago. When's the second best time? Let's start today. So I would call on the governor to, uh, in the words of my Valley colleague, let my people go, let them drive down to Anchorage across a Knick Arm Crossing, put people to work, and uh, improve the life of Alaskans. Representative Pruitt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know the the the, the process, and, and and I'll can bring back to the you know the process that we've had on the the floor, and kind of talk a little bit about the budget that we have in front of us. You know the uh, the agency operations in the current budget that we have in front of us has increased UGF by 5.5 percent. This is not just growth and and maintaining inf uh, inflation, as we've heard many times argued from some of our colleagues. This is truly a growth in government that we've seen in front of us. As a matter of fact, the growth is so large that even the proposed income tax last year would not be able to cover the growth that has been offered. And what you've seen in the, on the floor, what you've seen through the amendment process is, um, as well as in finance, is a uh, measured approach in trying to ad address some of these concerns about the, the growth that's taking place. Uh, last year we offered substantially more. And this year, recognizing that last year we got turned down consistently, that uh, we tried to be uh, a little bit more cognizant of that and, and try to restrain what we had offered. And again, you're seeing, not only are you seeing them turned down, but if they don't want to actually vote on them, they'll, find, they'll table it or they'll find a reason to rule it out of order. And the ruling out of order is not necessarily uh, valid, to tell you the truth. So what you have is you have a, a concerted effort to not allow a conversation on why we should control government. You've seen a concerted effort to grow government. 
And uh, to add to that, I just want to make it clear that we're way behind where we were last year, just in timing. And that's not because of anything that you have seen from the Republican minority. Uh, it is because you have seen a majority who has done every effort that they can to find a way to uh, get more from Alaskans to pay for things that may not benefit Alaskans. And um, last week was, a, was just a kind of a circus, and Alaskans told them, you know, you, you need to start listening to us. And finally, at least they listened to them on that. But hopefully they'll listen to them with the, the, the 300 plus thousand people that are represented by the Republican minority when we offer effort, things that our constituents want uh, because they're Alaskans as well even if they don't, aren't represented by the current majority. Thank you. And with that, we'll take questions. If you could just, <coughs> just state your name and your affiliation, and be happy to ask, answer your questions. Yeah, hi. This is For Representative Chenault, um, maybe, should I say Speaker Chenault? I don't know what the proper term is. Uh, Rich Mauer, Channel 2 News. Uh, so you, you made a very public apology to the Speaker last night. What was... Uh, Sitting at the back table, I didn't see what that what what led to that. What was the cause? What led you to do that? Well, there were some things you said, uh, Rich, on the floor that uh, I thought uh, were inappropriate. Uh, dealing with the speaker, calling him by another name. John Harris. Correct. And uh, so you apologize for else. I apologize for my minority caucus because a member of ours. I, I think uh, crossed the line, and uh, uh, I know it was meant probably in gist, but I respect this building, I respect this institution, and I respect the speaker. I may not agree with him. We may fight like cats and dogs, but there's a time and place to do that, and I just thought that uh, it was the right time to apologize for something that was said that... Uh, uh, <clears throat> might have made him look bad and uh, as I said I respect the position enough to stand up and make an apology and you, like a ball, and you thought that was deliberate calling him <clears throat> speaker Harris or I thought it was a slip uh, of the tongue. I, I did at the time yes I did hi uh, Steve Quinn KTVA news um, we've heard a lot about concerns of growing government the last four years but troopers are government Prosecutors are government, teachers are government, your staff is government. How do you define too big? What, where is it too big? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that question, and I'll just say that I, I didn't, I've reduced my staff. Uh, even before I found myself in the minority, I had actually reduced my staff myself. We recognized, uh, we, I recognized then that if we're going to ask the rest of state government to, um, to constrain and constrict that, it was appropriate for me to ask the same thing of, of myself and my office. Um, but, you know, some of the, if you look at the things that have been offered over the last couple years, what we have done is we've gone in with a, with a scalpel. We've gone in with strategically and analyzed things where they have over-appropriated money for, for certain things. And um, it, it did, we didn't go in and start just slashing people. We didn't go in and just start slashing uh, jobs. What we analyzed was where are the things that we feel that you have determined that this is, um, uh, where you have asked for more than you have either needed or that you probably need, and, it, and all of those have been turned down. You know, we're not, in the, we're not in a place where we can just walk in and start just ha using a hatchet in, on things. Um, the goal has been to be strategic, uh, and I think that's what this majority has asked for, but yet when they've asked for it, they haven't listened to any of the things that the minority has offered and in that strategic analyzation of what the, the budget is. Instead, they turn around and they find a reason to say that somehow we're, we're, we're wrong, and they don't turn around and say, you're wrong, and let, me, let, let us explain why we think it is. We, we just think you're wrong. And so I think as we're analyzing, and this is what the Alaskans want us to do. They're, they're wanting us to go in and find those areas and be strategic about the, the, the manner, to go in and find those areas through the work that we've done that we feel we may have over-appropriated. And obviously, we're, we're none of even, we're not, they're not even considering any of those concepts. Andrew? 
Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. I'm interested in all of your thoughts on um, uh, how you see this year as being similar or different than last year. Mm, thanks, Andrew. That's a good question. I think, I think last year uh, there was some adjustment to um, getting used to the new leadership and and folks that had never been in positions they'd been in before. We have a uh, operating budget chair who's never sat on finance, so I think there was some adjustment on that. We have folks. Um, now in leadership and in positions that have never been in those positions before. So I think there was a lot of growing pains last year as far as um, working with the new leadership team, and I think we've ironed those out pretty well. I think the communication has been extremely good this year. Um, we, you know, we still are going to disagree on policies and budget items, but I think uh, now we understand each other a little better. We've had a year to work with each other, and um, I think... Uh, I really believe that um, Speaker Edgman has done a better job this year of communicating um, with our leadership team, and um, so it's, it's been better. I think you see a much better process on the floor um, using limiting debate or putting deadline, un unreasonable deadlines on um, amendments haven't been happening as much on the floor. I think they're still happening a little bit in committees, which is unfortunate, but you know, we're, we're here to do Alaskans' work. Um, we represent Alaskans, and Alaska sent us down here to do a job. And uh, so this year, I think uh, we have a mutual understanding that, you know, we're here not to not to beat up on anybody, but to, to get our work done. Dan? And then, good job. Mike? So I'll, I'll add two things to that. Um, one is you've seen us adjust our strategy in terms of how we work with them. We, we recognize last year there's no reason to go through a whole process. You know, we got turned down for 300 million and, and the many uh, amendments that we offered. We figured there's no reason to duplicate that. So let's, let's try to bring it in and make it smaller and, and let's see what we can do to be successful. The goal has been not to just put something out there to put something out there. It's, it's truly been to, um, uh, it's, it's truly been to try to be successful in, in the efforts that we're making. I think the other thing that you're seeing, and this comes from the majority, you've seen, and you saw it yesterday with the refusal to, to accept the idea that we're just paying for things that just kind of don't make sense with the, the $500,000 that was going towards the vitamin D. You now have seen the uh, conversation has adjusted to we're no longer in a fiscal crisis because and so we will just grow at abandon. We will go ahead and throw five hundred million dollars at something because we're not in a crisis anymore. And so that is an adjustment from last year. At least last year there was a recognition from the majority that we have a money problem. I don't think that's there anymore. They're just ready to go ahead and just grow the budget again. So very much a different conversation than we had from last year. Anybody else? Do you see um, any of your amendments uh, being taken up by the uh, Senate majority? Have you talked to them at all? I, yeah, I think I think we have some good ideas, and I you can't squash a good idea. If a good idea comes from a Democrat or Republican, it's still a good idea. So I think, yeah, I think Representative Pruitt and myself and our whole leadership team will be working with um, the Senate to incorporate some of our good ideas and. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll see a budget that's, you know, at least we want to hold the line. Uh, and that's what our expectation is this year. And uh, we'll continue to work, you know, with whomever um, can um, you know, bring that to reality. Anybody else? Steve? Yeah, I reached my organization. Uh, it seems like a lot of the cuts.